hello good morning good afternoon good evening from whichever parts of the continent you're in welcome back to adonai's kingdom where we talk about the most high god the channel we talk of the resurrection the life the real life of the kingdom the blessings of the kingdom welcome welcome it's adonai's kingdom and my name is awaudi the messenger uh let's start with our of prayer as usual lord god holy one of israel we bless you we honor you we thank you for the gift of life we thank you for protection and guidance i thank you oh lord for taking care of my viewers and listeners from whichever part of the world you are in thank you god for the visions that you show us and we pray over them as your children lord god use me as an oracle of your word of your voice use me to the end bless each and every member whoever is listening to this message let them let it impact them mightily and holy spirit we welcome you you welcome you take control in jesus name amen and amen hallelujah hallelujah <clears throat> well it's a new day it's a new dawn and today we are jumping straight to the word and the word here the message is death and resurrection death and resurrection you know as believers for those who don't believe who don't know anything about the kingdom of god as children of god we believe after death there's resurrection whereby you will be with the father you'll be with god almighty so here on this planet earth it's like believers are just passers by we are here we make good use of the king of the kingdom on earth but still there's another life afterwards after death so that's why today's message is about death and resurrection and i'll just jump straight you see i just wanted to show you how death doesn't scare believers as such okay people want to go to heaven but nobody wants to die but also people believe that the power of death and life is in the hands of the almighty god that's what we believe the power of the resurrection the death is in the hands of god and i'll just give you examples as we go along okay we'll start with the book of mark saint in the new testament the book of mark chapter number 5 which is uh, from 35 verse 35 to 43 from verse 35 to 43 mm. <clears throat> this is uh, jesus when he yet spe- spake there came from the uh, from the ruler of the sino- synagogue's house that's like a rabbi a priest something like that and said uh, okay they came to uh, some messengers came to this ruler of the synagogue house and they said to him thy daughter is dead why trouble thou the master verse 36 and as soon as jesus heard the word that was spoken he said unto the ruler of the synagogue be not afraid only believe these are the bits and pieces that we as christians even you as a non christian and you want to be part of the kingdom you have to grasp these ones be not afraid only believe believe in god and he suffered he suffered no man to follow him 
save it was just Peter and James and John, the brother of James, who followed Jesus. And then he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and seeth the tumult and them that wept and wailed greatly. It was a mourning. People were mourning really seriously because they, they had lost a daughter. And when he came in, he said to them, Why make ye this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. You see, in the kingdom, we see it in a different perspective as of the world. Here, and these are the things that we are taught by Jesus. He shows us this kid, the girl is not dead, but sleeps. And they laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them all out, he had to, you know, when you want to pray for somebody, there are some things that we have to follow step by step what Yeshua used to do. Sometimes when you want to pray for something, you don't need people around. Because you, you see, at first they laughed at him, they scorned because they knew that he was... This daughter was dead. The girl was dead. And whatever comes, out outcome, she'll still be dead. So these are uh, naysayers. Just like in the world, when you want to do something, there are people who will tell you you won't do, you won't succeed. Just walk away, push them away, and carry on with your life. And that's what uh, Jesus did here. He told them to leave the room. Okay, but when he had put them all out, he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel. Those were the people who now believed in Jesus. And then, and that were with him, that was his disciples, and entered in where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by his hand and said unto him, Talitha kumi. Kumi as in C-U-M-I. Talitha Kumi. Which is being interpreted as damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straight away the damsel arose from the dead and walked. For she was of the age of 12 years old. And they were astonished with a great astonishment. Now the people who are laughing, now they are, everyone is astonished. And he charged them straightly that no man should know of it and commanded that something should be given her to eat. That's the power of resurrection. This is the Lord that we serve. The Lord that we believe. Whatever he says, it is done. He resurrects. That's Jesus for you, my friends, there. And then also, Another part of our Lord Jesus. <clears throat> if we go to John chapter number 11. John, John chapter 11. It's supposed to be from verse 1 to 44. But I'll, uh, what I'll do, I'll jump. I'll, ju I'll go to some verses which uh, at least you can know about the death and resurrection. It's in the hands. I mean, that power Jesus has given us, he passed it over to his children. Now, in Lazarus, it's, it's about Jesus raising Lazarus, Lazarus from the dead. Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister, Martha. Remember, it was Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. You know, somebody who anoints your feet with oil, expensive oil, you are a visitor. Wipes your feet with her hair, makes sure that you are comfortable. That person is, he, he or she means good to you. He welcomes you. So this, this was... And Jesus really loved this family. So later on, <clears throat> in verse 11, these things said he, uh, he 
later on he was talking to his disciples and then they're in a different area not in Lazarus house because Lazarus was sick so Jesus said our friend Lazarus sleepeth but I go that I may awake him out of sleep he's seen it in the, in the spirit that's why we keep on saying we, we when you hear somebody saying I saw it in the spirit that this is what Jesus did and was always doing he saw Lazarus in the spirit dead then said his disciple if he sleep he shall do he shall do well how bet Jesus spoke of his death but they thought that he had spoken of taking rest in sleep then Jesus said to them plainly you know some, sometimes people don't understand you have to tell them plainly because not like today not everyone is spiritually feels like you so we have to be plain so he just said to them plainly because that time the disciples were still learning from him Lazarus is dead and I'm glad for your sake that I was not there for to the intent you may believe nevertheless let us go unto him you see the just as I have just said still the disciples were learning so he was telling them you may believe they, they are still in class these guys uh, so when Jesus came he found that he had lain Lazarus had lain in the grave for four days for four days Lazarus has been dead for four days and Martha the sisters were if only you were here he couldn't have died so you find in verse 33 then Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews were also weeping, which came with her. He groaned in the spirit and was troubled. He, he, literally, he was crying in the spirit and said, Where have you laid him? They, led, they said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. He really loved Lazarus and this family. And that's why you find this, this is the shortest verse in the Bible, which is says, which says, Jesus wept. He wept for. It's like Lazarus was his brother, and the, um, Martha were his sisters. Then said to then said to the Jews, Behold, now he loved him. Okay, verse thirty eight. Jesus therefore again groaning in himself cometh to the grave. It was a cave and a stone laid upon it, and Jesus said. Take ye the stone, Martha, and the and the sister of him that were dead said to him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he has been dead four days. Four days, somebody's dead. And then in 43, when Jesus had spoken, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Loose him, let him go. Loose him, let him go. You see, Jesus here said, Lazarus, come forth. You know, that was a grave. It's, it's like a graveyard. In, the, in that tomb he called Lazarus as a we can I had Billy Graham used to say what if why did he specifically call Lazarus he could have just said come forth but he didn't say that of which I think he had a point he was saying had he said come forth all the graves there Everyone could have come forth, but God was specific. Lord Jesus was specific. He said, Lazarus, come forth. So, Christians, when you are praying for something, be specific in your prayer. Go direct to the point. Don't beat about the bush. Just go straight to the point and be ask God for what you want. Be specific, and your answer will, your prayer will be answered immediately. Okay. That one, 
was another it's like resurrection here on earth and then if we jump to the book of luke luke chapter number 23 23 verse 39 to 43 yeah it was uh, about a criminal who believes you remember uh, that's why i say in the kingdom there's death and there's resurrection anything is possible with jesus everything anything you might think of it's possible even being forgiven of sins being welcomed to the kingdom of god it's possible you just have to believe in god so you see and even last minute there was somebody who was asking me these people the guy he's not a believer but he was just telling me these people who don't who are so bad in this world who are so evil are they really going to be with god are they going to heaven and then the guy is like i'm sure they are going to hell they're going to burn the way they mistreat people on this earth i told him nobody knows who's going to heaven and who's not going to heaven only god only jesus knows who's coming to his kingdom me i don't know everybody doesn't know your friend is going but if you believe in jesus you yourself inside you are welcome you are already welcomed in heaven in your soul you know you are part and parcel of the kingdom so i told the guy only god knows who he is going to admit in heaven and then uh, to give to, to give the story some more strength you find there's this part of uh, we can say the criminal believes in a uh, look look chapter 23 verse 39 to 43 it's when jesus was on the cross when he was being crucified and 39 says and one of the male factors which were hanged railed on him saying if thou be the christ save thyself and us you know they were, jesus was there here on the right hand side there was one thief and the other side on the left hand side was another thief but the other answering rebuked him saying those don't don't do not thou fear god seeing thou art the same condemnation and we indeed for we receive due reward of our deeds but this man has done nothing amiss and he said to jesus lord jesus lord remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom and jesus said unto him verily i say unto you the for today thou shall be with me in paradise and that's how that di- that guy died and you see last minute he was saved he was in paradise with jesus so as for us guys the way we are we can't judge who's going people can be evil but you don't know when what they are going to say in their last minute how their life is changing so we are not supposed to judge others who gave you the authority to judge that's what the bible tells us so we should not just be good to people be part and parcel of changing the world in your own way in yeshua's mighty name amen and amen if you're there you don't know anything about christ and you want to be part and parcel of the kingdom you want to be in the resurrection part not in the death part whereby you go to hell say this prayer after me father lord i come before you as a sinner i am a sinner i've sinned against you and against the world cleanse me of all my sins i want to be your child oh god i believe that jesus christ was crucified died on the cross for three days after three days he rose again and now he's written he's seated on your right hand side oh god accept me to be part of that kingdom and forgive me my sins in jesus name amen and amen if you say that prayer you are a child of god you are on your way into the kingdom or in fact you are in the kingdom right now the angels are re- rejoicing and also join a church near you start meeting with the christians believers and they'll show you the way they'll help you to walk the way 
and also get a Bible, a King James Version, and start reading it slowly by slowly in Yeshua's mighty name. Amen. And God, I pray for my viewers, each and every one of them. Let them know that death is real and resurrection is real and the kingdom is real. Let them understand the ways of the kingdom. Bless each and every one of them. Bless them mightily. Open doors, open windows, open heavens in their families, in their workplaces, in their businesses, in their trades, in whatever they do. Bless them mightily in Yeshua's mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. May the Holy One of Israel bless you and protect you. See you next time. Shalom. Peace.